Turn my clock, I can't stop. Fuck around, make my 40 pop. No pop kind, I pop pistols. What it do, YouTube? My name is Bear Witness. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have something new. We have the podcast. I don't know what we're calling it yet. Right now, I'm going to call it Unpopular Opinion. That might stick. That might not. I don't know. But we're going to be recording a lot of different things. I'm going to go ahead and welcome to the channel um, Mason. Yeah, what's up? And then uh, Emilio is here, too. Hello, hello. You guys will know them a lot more throughout the podcast. We're going to try to do this at least once, maybe twice a week. Anyways, we're going to cover topics that could be anything, everything that we possibly can. If we have an idea on it or if you guys have anything on it, you guys just mention them down below and we'll be able to talk about it next time. You guys will get our opinions. This is a, definitely a safe place for you guys to voice your opinions as well. With that being said, we're going to get into the first topic. Now, what do we got on deck for the day, boys? All right, so first thing uh, we have, well, I'm just going to give a quick overview of everything we're, uh, we're going to talk about. So uh, first thing we have is Ninja and his stream sniper drama. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we also have where does Black Ops 4 rank amongst the other Call of Duties? Uh, what, do we, what do the other Call of Duty studios have to do to stay relevant? Then, mm. And then we have two more topics. One, this one is can you really make gamers happy? And the last topic no. is, can Red Dead Redemption Online live up to the hype and also compared to Grand Theft Auto Online? Okay, okay, okay. So with that being said, the first topic, the Ninja Stream Sniper drama. Now, I know, Emilio, you were saying earlier that you didn't really know what was going on with that. So let me let me just kind of spread this out for you. Uh, so the other day, it was a Ninja After Dark stream, and, uh, you know, he was he, he got killed out of nowhere. And the first thing he said was, or Dr. Lupo said, you know, wait for the emote, wait for the emote. And then finally, well, from what I can see or what I saw, the kid emoted. And then Ninja immediately went on a tangent. He was like, you know, I'm going to have this guy reported. I'm going to have this guy kicked out of the, you know, or, or banned. I'm going to do everything in my power to get him banned. That was not appreciated by the community. Uh, in fact, the other guy made a video uh, that was talking about how, you know, he was gonna. He he didn't really do it. It just randomly happened, and I kind of sympathize with the guy. You know what I mean? He uh, he didn't do anything wrong. He he killed he killed Ninja, and then he emoted. He was happy about it, and I can't see a reason. Now Ninja did say if you go into his background, he's he's stream sniped him before, but I I, I don't know. I, I I say that let the sins of the past be let go, and like the fact that he killed Ninja, obviously caught him by surprise. All of a sudden, his main reaction is, oh, oh, oh I got to ban this guy. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I I think Ninja's too big for his britches. But what do you guys think? Uh, uh, well, Mason, you haven't really said much, so why don't you take yeah, it? I mean, I was, one? You know, I just, I don't know. When it comes to stuff like that, I mean, I guess on a, on a larger scale, you know, that like what he's on. I mean, you know, he's got millions of people watching him. I guess stream sniping would get annoying. But if you really think about it. Are you really going to be able to stop it? I mean, you know, you got that many people watching you, and, and you know, people are going to try and queue when you queue. There's only so much you can do to, to not get stream sniped. So, I mean, at that point, I mean, you, you claim that you're so good and stuff. I just feel like, I mean, it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, and it shouldn't be, you know, drawn That's up to what it is. That's such a fair point. Like, if you really think about it, think about how many times Shroud's taken on, like, lobbies of stream snipers. And I'm just like, at what point does it seem like, oh, hey, bro, you're you're kind of, like, if, if you were good, you know, you would be able to take on these streams. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would have to agree with basically almost everything that you guys have said. I mean, my only problem with it is if this guy is repetitively stream sniping him, then I guess I can see where that would be the issue. But... Overall, I, I think the way that he reacted is kind of basically him being like, I'm bigger than you, so I'm just going to basically take away your rights from watching me on Twitch, which I think that's I think that's extreme, but I think definitely that I can see where it would get annoying, but I, I don't think that he has the, like, I don't think he should uh, throw himself at people like that, basically saying that I'm a big streamer, I have a lot of power, and they'll do whatever I say. That's where I have the problem, personally. What I forgot to mention about that was that during the situation, he was calling the guy an idiot and all this stuff. But, the, you know, in my opinion, the guy made out like a bandit. Because not only did he kill Ninja, but, like, 
Which is I man, if I killed Ninja, you could I'd probably take my shirt off on stream and just play with my nipples for a little bit. <laughs> but when I, I was oh, like man. but like legit, he was like he got like nineteen K subs. Like when I went to his channel the other day, he had nineteen K subs and I'm like, Bro, you're telling me if Ninja got mad at me that I would get that many subs? Like are you are you for real right now? Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with that. Like Ninja's I'm just fueling his everything. His Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, best believe if I'm getting that, I'm killing his ass every time. Right. <laughs> I mean, come on now. And, I mean. and well, the other uh, problem that I would see with Ninja reacting that way is how he's built himself as a, like a all age friendly stream and yeah, reacting well, like that. Even get me started on that, bro. I mean, I, I, I agree. His his like attitude and, and his actions don't don't correlate with with that statement of him being like yeah i'm a kid-friendly stream especially going back like all the way with the miss drama how he didn't want to play with miss because he swears too much but like yeah i mean you you saw how how he went back oh. on his own words but that, that that's my problem with him though is if he's such a kid-friendly streamer like you have seen him react like that well well okay hold on hold on one second well i do have to mention that this was ninja after dark which he this is when he plays at a certain time to which all the children are usually in bed now if people trickle through after that that aren't that are still children that's not his problem because it's ninja after dark you know so you know he can't really say anything he can't i mean you can't really say anything about that in that situation but yeah. what i will say about the whole like he's on the same wave as Elliot, right yeah. The difference, the reason why I can say Ali A is acceptable is because Ali A never was on stream cursing up a storm. The thing that I see, I have a problem with is you can't make people feel bad about cursing inside of their their videos or their their streams when you used to have the foulest mouth on the internet. Like, oh yeah, and he like puts people down intentionally for it, and and when they're streaming like with him, they don't let him famous. cuss. Really, he gets onto them about it, and I'm just like, you know, I mean, calm down. I mean, they can conduct themselves how they want to. You know, nobody unless, has to do it just like you. Unless they're famous, mind you. Now, some of my favorite people to watch cuss. You know what I'm saying? They keep it real. They keep it 100. They keep it like it. T I is, and that's well, they're the themselves. Like he's not being himself when he's restraining himself from saying what he normally does. Exactly. I don't think. But so we all we, we all agree that he should just calm his tits. <laughs> yeah, basically. Right. So yeah, let's move on. Let's move on to I feel like probably one of the strongest points of this whole podcast, or well, this episode anyway, is where does BO4 rank amongst amongst the best cods? Which I feel like this is gonna spark mm. some, some argument. Well, here. okay, so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something right here, right here, right here. The my favorite cause I love Black Ops. Like I've done the most in every single Black Ops games, no matter which one it is. Even World at War. I don't count it as a Black Ops. But here we go. Modern Warfare 2, there's nothing like it. I'm sorry. There's just nothing like it. The game, absolutely insanity. The most fun, probably. It was at the peak of Call of Duty's popularity. I can't I, you can't you can't honestly say that Call of Duty's been more I mean I guess you could say it in sales in that sales perspective but modern warfare 2 ranch you know that's where the mod lobbies really came into play that's where trick shotters really made a name for themselves you know what i mean and so in that in that sense call of duty grew as a community call of duty established itself as a community in modern warfare 2 so it's got to have that top spot for me you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know after that bo2 and then I'd say BO4 is number three. Like, there's some things I don't like. There's some things, but, you know, that's all a part of the longevity process of, like, the game. We have a whole year of content, you know. And if it's anything like World at War, when they had the, the constant events and stuff like that, this game's going to be epic, dude. Eh, I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely like the COD so far, but, I mean, right as I, you know, really try and get into it, there's just some aspects that I'm just like, you know, that's that's super unnecessary. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I guess there there's parts where, you know, you got to try and switch it up and make it original and, you know, do your own thing with it. But, like, I, I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel like Black Ops 3 did, did a better job of the specialists than, than Black Ops yes. 4 did. Yes, dude, yes specialists in this game are stupid they nerf my man's ruin I, that's all i have to say because i do not know why you need a grappling hook on a map the size of my shoebox 
I don't. Why do you need two abilities? I mean, okay, to me, like a super was enough, or like whatever you want to call it, ultimate. Is, is it all right? But let's be honest. Like maybe the gravity spike isn't as powerful, but like unless you were playing competitive, you didn't use overdrive from Black Ops Three. No, I mean I did though. That's the thing is I did use the gravity, especially when you were going for like high kill games, but you weren't necessarily going for things that you know. <laughs> I mean, it's good to save to... you in sticky situations. Like, when it's close quarters, somebody's in your face, and you just grab Spike and they can't kill you. I agree with that. But, for me, I don't know. I feel like I feel like the specialists this time around are more, like, less annoying. Now, for example, before Black Ops 3, if there was a Tempest, or um, even... What was her name? The one that had the bow? I already forgot. Oh, uh, oh Sparrow? Uh, Outrider. Outrider. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Like, was it that? I, feel, I, I feel like those specialists were more lethal specialists. Like, and this one is more about, like, for example, you have Recon, who, like, you saw today, we were, we were playing Nuketown, and, uh, like, it's all about, like, basically having what used to be an, uh, an, uh, an orbiter from Black Ops 2 and, like, a mini UAV that lasts, like, a little while. But that to me, like, having those specialists now, I feel like those help you with the kills. Versus having a lethal specialist, you're like, well, for example, if you're on a streak, the non-lethal ones help you continue that streak. And this one, like, yeah, you're going to get the kills, but it, it's, I don't know, to me, it's, it, to me, I like the specialist more in this game than I did in Black Ops 3. Well, big fella, Recon is the sa- is Outrider's second ability. Like, his main ability is Outrider's second ability. Her pa- all, the ca- all the specialists in BO3 had a passive and an aggressive, like, yeah, ability. Yeah, that, that, that I agree with. But I, I feel like that's what I feel like they took the nerf hammer to that. They were tired of, I mean, they left some lethal stuff in there, but I'm sure you can, I mean, I imagine, I like, I still remember from Black Ops 3, you would load in and, you know, within two minutes, three minutes, everybody would be having their specialists and you'd well, be on your kill streak you and you get a gravity spike. Or, no matter you know which I mean? way you look at it, there, every Black Ops game has something that you think, oh, hey, this is terrible now. But then you get to the next game made by Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer, and you're like, wow, I kind of missed that, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, like BO2 had the shock the, the, the shock stick. I forgot. What was it? The, 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 the little the little oh, oh, the, uh, you could throw down. Oh. Yeah, they know what we're talking about. I yeah, and then the shock the charge. There we go. Betty. Yeah. yeah, shock charge and bouncing Betty combo. That was absolute AIDS. And the first time we actually saw a shield, you know, that was terrible. Uh, yeah, that shield's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now you can see where we've, where we've evolved yeah. with the shield, and it's kind of like, wow. Only Ajax can be nerfed so hard and yet still be the most broken and feared character yeah, on the map. Let me, let me stick my gun through yeah, a hole. Shoot you. <laughs> You can't you can't do anything about it. But to to stay on on where Black Ops Four ranks, Mason, you never said it fits in your top cog. Uh, right. I mean, I'd put it I'd put it top five, and I think I'd make it number five. I I feel like I've I've seen better, but I I've definitely seen a lot worse. I mean, I I absolutely despise the last cod. I I just I couldn't really pinpoint what it was you know, for me, but I didn't like it all too much at all. That's so crazy because World at War, in my opinion, it really wasn't that bad. I know I didn't play it a lot, you know, uh, I didn't play World at War a lot, but it wasn't that bad. I didn't play it a lot based on the fact that I really didn't have anybody to play it with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that, that in a way, that's what kind of gets the games to survive. It's yeah, playability yeah. with your friends. If I, yeah. But Fortnite really did ruin that for everybody. So, you know, everybody. Oh, yeah, that, that was the one that took the biggest hit out of all the cards from like yeah. another game, in a sense. But. All right, so I'm going to give you guys my top five cards, and then you'll tell me, like, obviously, Java, I've already heard your top, so I know you're going to do Oh, wait, wait, with me. my top five? Wait, wait a minute, wait, I didn't say same other you... two. Yeah, what would you okay. be your or Okay, here? so, so here we go. You guys are not going to expect this, okay? Number four, Call of Duty Ghost. I just... That game was actually really dope, and I really don't understand why people hate on it. Oh, I had some of my best times in that game. And I'm then number sniper. five, and it's going to shock the shit at Advanced Warfare. And I, it's oh, I know that one was coming. Fact, it's only because they did they, they were the first to innovate the Call of Duty scene with jetpacks. It was dope. When we first saw it, nobody complained about it because it was actually really oh, yeah. dope. They dove in front of the bullet for that, though, let me tell you. 
They, yeah, they did, yeah. and that's why that's why I will I will admittedly always play a sledgehammer game, and that's just because of the fact that they tried so hard. Now, Infinity in, Infinite Warfare. That's why I say Infinity because I always think of Buzz Lightyear when I think of that game. Infinite <laughs> Warfare. I never. I'm gonna tell you, I touched that for all of two GBs, and that was with Mason and Jamal, and then I never played that game again. Yeah, I never even bought it. Never even played it. But I will. I'm gonna give you my top five. So number one, yeah. Black Ops Two. Hey. I, I, like there's just something about like the league play, the multiplayer. You could that's yeah. the first game that I just got on and I felt like, holy crap, man! Whether that's you're playing can. by yourself, whether you're playing with people, whether you're in league play, the zombies. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, all right, that's so it. maybe maybe too early to call this one, but number two, Black Ops Four. I only put it. Okay. I only put it. I only put it number two because. It's it's early, you know what I'm saying. I really enjoy this game. You I still got like, that 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 new car smell going. Yeah, yeah. So, but also because it's so different from anything we've ever seen, like the self heal, uh, the battle royale. That's obviously, fair. first game to do that. I mean, e- even if this game had a lot of problems at launch and it technically wasn't finished, dude, we had five zombies maps at launch if you bought the Black Ops pass, which that is basically almost. The same amount that you got in the past with the original map that came with the game and then the four DLCs. My so, only issue with that is what you just said. It's when you got the Black Ops Pass. Yeah. I wanna I was I felt forced into buying the Black Ops Pass. I didn't feel like it was just something that should have had I felt forced into it or I would be at like a, a weird place because you can't even buy the DLCs separately. It's yeah. either buy the Black Ops Pass now or buy it la- buy it later or don't get it at all. There's no <laughs> blame Fortnite. Around. But here, Max. here's my thing though like let's be honest like maybe 30 percent maybe even less of people when it comes to call of duty didn't get the seasons pass whether it was they bought it or they got it off of their friends let's be honest eventually you you had the seasons pass true so That's i feel true. like i feel like even if they did the old format anyway you were gonna buy that seasons pass regardless so I, mean, I, I know i probably was so you're right yeah and that's why i didn't really have that i mean i guess I see the problem with pinning people's backs to the wall, and I feel like that's where people got upset. But let's be honest, everybody who complained, like 90% of them, would have bought the season's pass. Anyway. Right, they're still buying it anyways. They're just, yeah, they're right. just looking for a reason I to guess, complain. How many old dudes have you seen in Blackout? That's like the defining factor. I go into my first Blackout lobby, and all I see is old dudes around me, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. Number three for me, I, I agree with John Blood and that, Modern Warfare 2. And every every point that you made, number four, COD four, just because uh, it was. That's true. I well, I you know I played COD four, but I didn't play it like that. Like it was just something my brother in law had, and I was yeah. just playing it from here and there. So I I don't I although I want to consider myself a player of that game, I didn't play it like that. So I don't really have that feel for it. Yeah, you know I mean, that's but. before my time. So that that one's on y'all. And number five, Java, Call of Duty Ghosts, dude. Yeah, right. That game was awesome. you know, It was the only S&D. game that you could have Michael. It had Michael Myers in it. It had the Predator in it. Dude, like, oh, I loved, I was loved um, Blitz. Blitz was a great yeah, game. Yeah, Blitz was. I, I, man, top 5K player in Blitz. You already know what it is. <laughs> you know, Ghost might not be the best COD of all time, but I'll tell you, best DLC of any Call of Duty we've ever seen. Yep. Hands down. Hands right. down. M- Michael Myers. Predator, Snoop Dogg as your commentator. That yeah, is true. Yeah, yeah. That last Call of Duty where you could actually choose what you got with your money when it came to microtransactions. Uh, it, it, it honestly, it, it was really good. Maybe the thing that killed it, aside from the colors not being too attractive, was the map sizes. That's what but, I was saying. The maps were a little dull. Like, the coloring, that it was a little dull. And they were massive. Yeah, they were pretty like, big. They were pretty like, big. They were, they were fun, though. They were fun. Yeah, they, they were fun, um, without a doubt. Hmm. All right. I guess I'll I'll shoot my top five out there real quick. I I mean, I'm pulling from about like six, so only one's going to miss the list here. But I feel like I got to go Black Ops 2. That that game was like when I was loved playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was just when I was like loved playing it. I wasn't too good. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't too good at it, but it was just fun. And the fact that I could be bad at it and still have fun, I mean, it tells you something. Yeah. And then, um, and two, probably Black Ops 1, because that's, like, when I first really played Call of Duty. 
Like, I played, like, a, a smidge of MW3, but that, I mean, you know, that wasn't enough to get interested. But, um, three, mm, I'm on the fence here with three. I feel like I want to go Black Ops 3, but then I'm just, I, then I got all Black Ops in my, in my top three. Hmm. I think I'm going to go Black Ops 3, Ghost, and then, uh, and, uh, uh, I'm on the fence. I don't know. What do y'all think? AW or Black Ops 4? I'm oh, Black pretty Ops sure y'all are going to say Black Ops 4. Yeah, Black Ops 4. And don't get me wrong. Advanced Warfare was really fun when it, when it lasted, when jumping to the moon was cool up until no, it, about it, it brought on the actual core pro- process of supply drops that were actually fun yeah. the only the only thing that really messed that game up was the fact that the what the weapon variants actually did more damage that's and true. that's the yeah. that's the only thing if they didn't change that game would have been probably revered as one of the best call of duties there were just based yeah. on the fact that it actually wasn't bad infinity yeah. war did a good job on, i mean sledgehammer did a good job on that especially for that being their first call of duty that's that's yeah. a big thing also you know shouts out to my man dr disrespect you know he made like a good half of the maps so <laughs> that's, that's a good point <laughs> but speaking about other studios let's move on to question three which is what do you think other Call of Duty Studios had to do in order to stay relevant because oh, we wow. have seen we Did have we seen really just transition perfectly into that. <laughs> well, now, oh. now you messed that up. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm saying you shouldn't point it out. We got, we got, we got <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, because I mean, basically, as as we've already noted, you know, Ma or not Modern Warfare, my bad. Uh, Treyarch is the only thing that, for me, especially in recent years, has kept the Call of Duty community coming back. See, if you guys can see me on camera, I could get real close. And just imagine a big black dude just getting real close and looking at you deep in the eyes. Don't make battle royales. Like, you're just going to fuck it up. Like, seriously. You think? Yeah, I think there's no other studio that can do this. Do do, do it well. Do it justice. Do it. I don't think that that's Everything the- else is going to be like a Walmart version. Yeah, but- they, they did it. They did it right. It's like It's like, it's like this. Think about the difference between like, 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 uh, Treyarch zombies and like other zombies that you've played in other Call of Duties. It's just not. It's not the same. It's not gonna work out. And everybody's just gonna constantly be like, "Who did you? What did you think you were doing with this, man? What?" And see, you know what? To be honest, mine, mine is kind of flip flop. I would prefer a battle royale. In the next Call of Duty over another knockoff zombies. And I'll tell you why. Wow. Because Battle Royale was already around. It, Fortnite didn't invent it. Fortnite made it mainstream. But that was already out. And Call of Duty just decided to go to that hype. Everybody was watching Battle Royale. Everybody, Whether it was PUBG or whether it was H1Z1 or whether it was Fortnite. People were watching that. People were playing it. So they just went with the hype. And obviously it's it's done good. Because you don't struggle to find players at all. You know, and people are really them. into it. People were really into it, and it was a great idea for them. And and they just they just took the hype train. But for yeah, that's, me, the, that's the funniest thing about the Fortnite is the fact that it was a dying company. Like that their game, their Save the World that they're trying to push out to people later on this year. That thing was dying. It was not doing what they needed it to do. And then they're like, okay, well, what can we do? And I, some intern had to have been like, okay, well, I got this idea. This game's got a lot of buzz. I've been playing it. You know. Probably not doing yeah. my job as much, but playing this <laughs> game. And then he's like, okay, well, we got a month. Make it. And they did. And now it's an $8.5 billion project. That's exactly. just – that's crazy. But, but you, you see my point, though, is, is Battle Royale was already out. The thing about Zombies, that was created by Treyarch. Not, and, I, and that was within Call of Duty. And for other, for other uh, games to try to take that and kind of try to replicate that – it's always been trash to me because it's not the same. But for me, Battle Royale, since it's been done by a, a bunch of other companies, whether it's a crappy one or whether it's good, like something like Fortnite, I think that, that, that a Battle Royale to copy is better than to do another Zombies. Because to be honest, let's, like seriously, maybe well, if you were bored, you played Advanced Warfare Zombies. But... Well, well, hang on, hang on. Let me throw this in here real quick. Disclaimer for anybody that's, that's a little lost right now because I'm sure a lot of, like, well, some people know this, but not a lot. Call of Duty is not made by the same company every year. I feel like some people are under the the thought that yeah, it's made by the same people, people every year. 
It, it is not. It's it's been trading off with three, but then didn't they just drop one? They drop one after. No, 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 it, no, no. no. I thought they dropped the uh, sledgehammer. No, they they're still making one. I don't know. They're still making one. I'm sure that this has to be like do or die for them this year. Well, see, here's my thing. You have to think about the fact that these other companies, like, okay, okay, think about this. Even with the hate that Black Ops got. It did not get one million views in the first five. I mean, one million dislikes in the first five hours, like Infinite Infinite Warfare did. Yeah. Like that's what's you got to think about them as a company about how much this is. That like how how often are you gonna have to sit back and listen to the oh this company is doing way better because you got to think they're getting yelled at. They have to be getting yelled at like by like the big COO or whatever. You know, you guys aren't putting out content. We're losing money when you guys make the game. You know, this isn't looking good. And you have, they have, they are constantly, constantly getting that every single time that they make mm-hmm. a game. So the, you got to think that they, just for their own sanity, for them to just leave it alone and let them just like, you know, mm-hmm. make their own thing, come up with something different. Maybe something else will get hyped up, maybe. But like I personally, I couldn't. It's like your big brother consistently getting the praise every time you try to do something. It's just, it's got to get old. It's got to get old. I don't know. I, I, I think for their own sanity as a company, because uh, somebody's gonna try to shoot themselves or something. Because I, I know when I saw the, the, the millions of dislikes, I was like, dude, that must suck to be a game creator and just all you see as soon as your trailer drops. Because you got to be hype. You know, the endless hours. Like, imagine people on Red Dead. The Rockstar creation team, they were getting hate because they were letting their workers like willingly spend 100 hours like plus weeks on, you know, making the game. So imagine if Rockstar's game or or Red Dead Redemption 2 came out and everybody hated it. Like you have to think all of that blood, sweat and tears Mm -hmm. is just it's it's got to be taxing. It's it's, it's hard for you. But all right. to, To answer the question for me, for what they have to do, to be honest. Right now, to stay relevant, seeing, as as I mentioned already, that Battle Royale is what's the big thing right now, they have to have that in the next game. If they don't, people are still going to be playing Black Ops 4. And I'm sure that's going to happen anyway, but I'm talking in a greater number. Uh, multiplayer has to be boots on the ground. If you go back to boosting now after this game, you're ki- you're, that, that to me is shooting yourself in the foot. But it also has to be fast-paced. I think that's what Black Ops has always offered, is a fast-paced game mode like like the gameplay of black ops has always been fast paced yeah it's always been it's always prided itself on that and that's kind of like the big thing like yeah i I see i feel like mod. i feel like infinite warfare should just take a step back go ahead and make modern warfare 4 make it a the keyword modern because if i get another period game whether it be the future even 25 minutes into the future or the past i'm probably just going to shoot myself yeah, people flip out more over it being in the future in the past than they do about it being in the present and i think they kind of talk to themselves like they talk themselves into oh we need to switch it up you know we need to do future we need to do past and all this but i never really heard many people you know really pushing them to do a different time period really well my thing is i think it's i think it's on a personal thing but i need them to figure a way around that because i think it's i think it's when it comes to it people are sensitive and so you mentioned the wrong thing at the current time the world is in and they're uh, you know you get so much hate on your game like okay so battlefield 5 sales went down based on the fact that they've had a lot of uh they 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 did they had an equality type thing they went they went for equality instead of playing making the game more true to the fact so women now i'm not i'm not i'm not this isn't about being anti-feminist or whatever whatever you want to call it whatever the the proper term is it's not about me hating on women it women weren't in World War II like that. And because they did that like that, the game got a lot. And when I mean a lot of hate, it, may, it got a lot of hate. I haven't seen, I've never seen Battlefield in a place where they were almost, it seemed like they were struggling to even get pre-orders like they were. Mm-hmm. And you got to think about it, the game is in this situation. It's like, oh, hey, we're going to give away our DLC for free. Well, they probably wouldn't have done that if they knew that their game was going to tank that hard when it came to pre-orders. Now, I don't know how if the numbers have increased recently, but that was the last thing I heard. Um, well, the game just recently dropped, and earlier I checked Twitch, and there were only, like, with 20,000 views on Twitch. So yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not doing, I mean, Battlefield has never been a huge game to watch anyway, but I feel like 20,000 for a recently released game is, is not too great. Well, but, uh, slightly off topic, when it comes to video games like Battlefield, the only players that are playing Battlefield are people that were talked into it by their friend, 
or people that have been playing Battlefield for a long time. That's exactly. why every match is super competitive. You don't know what's going to happen because you're nine times out of ten playing somebody that's already reached like a high level 150 in the last game or something like that. Like you are yeah. playing experienced as Battlefield players when you play Battlefield, and that's yeah. always yeah. Happens. It's the same thing with Halo. I mean, yeah, they're, that's they're both in the if same. Somebody's buying thing. Halo. They're not just saying, "Oh, hey, I'm going to buy Halo." Oh yeah, this seems fun. There's oh shit, Halo came out. Time to fuck everybody up with the PR. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, well, aside from what I said, you know, the battle royale, the boots on the ground, fast pace, I would, I would say, I'd stick to my original point and don't do zombies as your third mode. And and to me, campaign, don't consider that your third mode either. I would say honestly, I know a lot of people hated extinction, but we talked about this too. Extinction is basically zombies, but it was just a different twist on it. And for me, I we had fun playing that. I remember the one time where we finally beat Extinction after trying like over and over again. We had, we were happy, but I know majority of the community hated Extinction. So if, if they brought that back, it would probably be an upgrade. Like it would be rage from the community. So they need to do something something else. But for me, uh, zombies, a knockoff zombies, that that isn't for me. But what do you guys think? What should the other cause studios do to stay relevant? I personally think. That, well, I've stated my facts to others. Or I, I think that making the game modern is the way to go about it. You know, Mo- a modern feel. Everybody wants a modern shooter, and that's what's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not really trying to piggyback off of what you said, but I mean, I feel like they can really do like whatever they want in a sense. I feel like no matter what they do, they'll never be as big as Treyarch at all like Treyarch's like literally the 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 golden state warriors of of the damn cod making you know not make that reference in this podcast i mean (laughs) you can use the patriots you can use whoever you want the 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 team that dominates it the most and that will not be touched really but you see you say that but if if you would have gone back to modern warfare 2 and you told me that Treyarch would eventually in the next few years be better than than Infinity Ward, people would have said you're freaking crazy. No, so they I, wouldn't. No. Anybody that's ever played a Black Ops would know that that game's always been superior. I'm sorry, oh. I got apples. No, okay, so you can't say that because you said Modern Warfare 2 was your number one. So you know and what it, I'm saying? Like, like it, 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 while you were playing that game, however, that, like you said, that was where Call of Duty reached its height. If you told somebody else that this company would eventually start making games that people hated, and this other company, which... I'm not saying track was bad because by no means was World at War bad or Black Ops One bad, but it was it was definitely it was definitely uh, for me in my opinion. If you would have said that back then, I don't think anybody could have seen the direction that that Treyarch has, has taken. Mm. I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I mean, it it's so so hard though because they've like they've low key flopped. The last COD that they made, oh, and yeah. like I, it's That's true. it's just hard to come back and, from a flop. And honestly, honestly, what made it worse was if you would have released COD Four by itself, you would have made all the money that you lost, but you hit it behind a game that nobody wanted to play. And nobody would have played that game for long. Let's be honest. Okay, but come on, would you rather have played Infinite Warfare or? Call oh, I'd I'd have played that over Infinite Warfare. I'll give you that. But, I mean, like he said, I don't know if it had any type of longevity to it. Just because it's simply a game that's already been out. Yeah, like, I mean, or uh, even that, you lose okay, all but, the young players. Like, no yeah, matter but, what, now, us experienced players, yeah, fine. We didn't we didn't really want to play it. Whatever, COD 4, all that, woo-woo. But there's new kids growing up and playing Call of Duty every day. That's the, They want a new game. They don't want a game that they that's old with new graphics. Graphics okay. doesn't mean anything to a kid. They think about every. 10 year old that was playing minecraft okay but but you just said it though you just said they have never played this game so wouldn't it be new to them no it wouldn't because everybody's talking about the nostalgia they have youtube they know how old the game is i mean okay but but you can you at... really make everybody happy though and, uh, no for me for me you can't never i mean no matter what you do no matter what direction you take it there's people who like boosting and hate boots on the ground which will be all your new COD, Call of Duty players, because they've never experienced boots on the ground like we have. We've been playing it for years, and then you know, it, no matter what you do, whatever game mode you do, whether you add campaign or not, there's always going to be hate. 
But obviously, as, as you guys saw, even with Black Ops 4, how much hate the game got. Oh, I'm not buying this. I'm not going to buy this game. And the sales were the best of any other Call of Duty game that there's been. Yeah. It out, and it, didn't you say the other day that it outsold Red Dead Redemption? No, I'm not talking about yeah. pre-orders, but I'm talking about actual sales. Yeah. And and that, that's what I mean. Like, you, you talk crap, but then when people actually started playing it and they're like, hold on, man, this game is actually good. Probably one of the best ones that we've had in recent years. And all of a sudden, now you have everybody there, and all the people who talk trash are either still playing Fortnite for free, or they're over here playing Blackout. I mean, like, that 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 to me is, I there's no way you can make everybody happy. Cause, I, mean, I don't think you can make everybody happy either, but I think there is such thing as creative entitlement. Mm-hmm. I think if you think about yourself as a creator, and then focus on the people second, like, yeah, okay, say the whole community was saying, okay, Ajax is stupid then that's one thing. But you also have to think about it in yourself. If they don't like your game, they don't really have to play it. As, as yeah. dickhead as that sounds, they don't have to play it. See, but you, but you can't go out and openly say that because that's what happened oh, in Battlefield. But here's my thing. To be honest, after they buy the game, it don't really matter. Yeah, that's a good point. All you need is for them to buy it. Because no, yeah, ma- no matter what... Job's done. No matter what, like, I'm sure the Call of Duty Ghost sales were good, but in terms of who was actually playing the game, that was bad. Even though we agreed that it was one of the best Call of Duties, especially when it came to competitive. But, I mean, playing playing that game, I mean, people would complain. They, they went back to Black Ops 2, they wouldn't play it, but the sales on that game weren't bad just because people were so excited off of Black Ops 2. I mean, that was also in a time where COD was still super relevant. I mean, you didn't have your Fortnite out there to, to that really challenged, you know, the game. You know, Call of Duty That's was true. up there at the top, and they were the Fortnite, in a sense, of that time. Yeah, even Battlefield couldn't beat them out. So people Halo would just buy it because it's the next thing. Like, everyone's oh. getting it. I feel like you're out of that time now. I feel like people yeah. are like, oh, well, I'm content with Fortnite. You know, I don't need the new COD. If all right, let me ask you guys a question that that's not on our list, but just to kind of keep this ball rolling a little bit longer. If Black Ops or not Black Ops, but if Call of Duty in general did not fall off the way that it did, so say it was just even if it was different, it was popular game after popular game. How would it? How would have it had competed against a game like Fortnite? Well, I well hmm, let me let me put it to you like this. I feel like. In a way, Fortnite did hurt COD, yes, but I feel like it almost did it a favor too, because you see what they did to COD. They they challenged them in a sense, like they made them push to try and get the top spot. I feel like they've never had to push like how they did against Fortnite. Yeah, they got lazy. So it's making them work harder and harder to put out a better game, a one that people are gonna like and pick over Fortnite. So I feel like in a sense, it almost helped them. Is it? Is this a, is this a better game? They I mean, opened up their eyes to a bigger a, a, a bigger game mode. You know, they opened their eyes to a bigger game mode. And then, not only did they do that, they gave them a new way to let people have downloadable content without charging them everything for it. Like, mm-hmm. we just got a whole battle pass for free. We didn't. Nobody did anything for it. We just got a whole battle pass full of cosmetics. Now, granted, it's not the best battle pass. Not sure why that we have a uh, like a only thing we get from it is outfits that we can't see, but you know when it comes down to it, they did a really good job with it, and they they've really learned some things, and that's what you see from this. Yeah. All right. So so let me let me put it this way then. Blackout or Fortnite. Um, that's hard because everything inside of me wants to say blackout, right? Mm-hmm. But Fortnite's a whole different monster by itself. The game's really fun by itself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna hop on and play it at the drop of a hat. No, but you know, there's something about outbuilding your opponent. There's something mm-hmm. about your opponent catching you by surprise, and you still being able to do something about it. In this game, you really can't. So, yeah, that's a good point. But, l- l- all right, so if you, because take out Fortnite being free, because I feel like that's one of the main reasons it became popular in the first place is a game that kids' parents didn't have to buy. But if you take it out and compare it 
from gameplay to gameplay, you know, what does it look like to you? Like, take out the prices, just, just the raw gameplay. Like, hey, hey, you were analyzing it, like you said. Fortnite, you can do something about it, which I have to agree in, in that sense. Because getting stuck in a, in a small circle at the end of a blackout game and you're in the middle of nowhere with not even a building, you're all on the edge of the circle. And it's, it's really luck. Whoever sees that person first and whoever gets that kill first is going to win the game. And that, for me, is where I agree with you that the building would have came would have came in so much more handy because you're sitting there building your cover that you need, and in blackout that that isn't there. There is no cover. Well, you, but that also comes with more skill, though, too, because I mean you got to worry about setting yourself up to be in a position where you're not in the middle. You know what I mean? So I mean, like yeah. while while you're saying that you know you can just you can be good at that like one aspect of the game and not be good at the actual game per se and still win. When it comes to Fortnite, I feel like in, in Blackout, you have to be well-rounded. You have to be able to win your gunfights in order to be able to win a game in there. I feel like Fortnite, if you can just build well and you can outbuild somebody, you, you know, Let me tell you you, something. you're going to win. The, th- the thing that made Fortnite cool, there's a list of reasons. You know, we can go on and on and on, but kid-friendly. Always will be. I don't know how, because you're still shooting people, but kid-friendly. But Another thing is, it was a totally different scheme. Call of Duty, like we said earlier, reigned supreme. Everybody knew how to play FPS, or at least knew how to work the sticks. Nobody knew how to build when Fortnite first came out. It was an experience. It was a reason for people to play the game because they saw these awesome builders going off and like winning these games, and everybody wanted to become a great builder. Fortnite collectively made a new type of game and that's why Fortnite is excelling. That's why Fortnite's a different monster in itself. But to answer your question, I probably would say uh, I can't choose. I can't. I can't choose between Fortnite and Blackout. I really can't. Mm. I can. <laughs> if we're talking about the games right now, I would pick Blackout hands down. But I feel like if we're if we're talking about like a prime Fortnite, like well, I mean Fortnite's still in its prime. Let me just just because I don't like it right now doesn't mean that millions of other people don't like it. But when it was in its prime for me, which was like season three, season two ish, around there, it was like it was like crack. Like I'm not even gonna lie. Like I would like be ready to just come and play, and I could sit here and play for hours and hours and hours just because it was new, it was different, and I was trying to get wins. And if you didn't have your good wins, then you were trash. So, and I hate being trash. So that's my lookout on it. So, Fortnite then better than Blackout now. But if we're talking right now, I'm going Blackout. I like it. I like that. All right. Hello? Well, I, I would I would say I would say blackout too. All right. So so let's move on to the last topic, <coughs> and that that would be how does Red Dead Redemption, if there's even a way, how do you live up to the hype of the entire game, and also when it comes to uh, GTA Online? Oh wow. Uh, you know. <clears throat> okay. So first things first. Um. We still gotta get Mason on that game so he can actually experience it. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, I'm I'm in the but, dark uh, here. When it comes to, I I don't know if it actually can, but that was the cool thing about Red Dead Redemption, the first one, compared to GTA 4, and uh, that was that was the cool thing was that it was um, it was its own thing, you know. When it, when you got on that game, you kind of like you didn't really do anything. You kind of rode around and just like pulled up on certain towns with your posse and killed like a bunch of people and got your bounties hella high and then other people would come over and kill you to get your bounties and that was like the whole game now adding houses and stuff like that like that could be cool but like ultimately they would have to i think they would have to time skip they would have to be at the age and era of the first cars so people can actually have the they got to think about all the like GTA Online is still getting new cars, and it's the game's like six or seven years old, and it's, they are still updating it. They're still giving it new cars, still giving it new houses, new missions. Like, either they're gonna have to do it progressively over the time. Like, if six years from now they start introducing the first cars, I wouldn't even mind that. If they didn't jump right into it, but they did it eventually, I wouldn't mind that. I would actually think that was way cooler, but. I mean, My thing is, go ahead. 
my thing is, I think that personally, that game is going to do nothing but show people what you can expect from GTA 6, and it's going to make the sales on GTA 6 skyrocket better than any game we've ever seen before. All right. Um, all right, go ahead, Mason. I mean, I like I'm I'm kind of in the dark on this one. I don't I don't really know uh, uh, too much about this. I mean, I played Red Dead in the past, but like I, I you know it, it wasn't enough to really have an opinion on it per se. I mean, I can tell you how much I like GTA and how much I I played that game for like the first like two years that it was out, and it was kind of surprising how it didn't get too stale. But I mean. <sighs> I don't. It, you're like two different kinds of players. Like, like what, what, what? Are, like, what's the main question we're talking about here? Well, I mean, Red Dead Redemption has, I think, broke the record for being the game with the most pre-orders. So there's that. And then there's also how you look at GTA Online. How you say it's really popular. Can Red Dead Redemption replicate that? I think that because it's next gen. I really think they have the biggest and best op- like no matter what GTA 5 no matter that they ported it onto this console they never had the intention of it being next gen. They never did. So the game is super like sandboxy now when it's on Xbox 1. But like we've seen when you play Red Dead Redemption 2 you see the vast amount that they were able to do. Like when you fall in the mud, not only do you leave a body print, but when you get up, your cover your clothes are covered in mud. That never happened in the old game. The people, if you have a fist fight with somebody in the mud, they're covered in mud. Your feet prints are covered are, are, are covered in mud. Your your I mean your boots and stuff are covered in mud. You leave feet prints in the mud. Like all of this is 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 amazing amounts of detail that I, I just I'm I'm curious of what they're gonna cook up for updates and stuff. The best thing that I've seen, and it's like the only thing I've seen from the game, but you can like pet a dog. Like you can like interact with a dog. And that's, like, so cool to be, because, like, you never, like, like it, that shows the amount of detail and, like, stuff that they put into it. And that's what comes with, like, like how long ago did the first Red Dead release? We probably don't even know. That's how I long think it's, ago uh, it I think it's, at this point, it's, like, ten years, or it's either, it's between exactly. eight and ten years. And we were talking about the pre-order thing. That's because those people that loved that game ten years ago heard all this, you know, coming up about the new game coming out. And they're, like, pre-order, 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 duh, is not the same COD every year. You know, it's not these same games that release once a year, Madden, FIFA, all that. It's not It's not one that releases every year. So there's obviously going to be hype around it just because of how far in between the releases there are. And I feel like if they don't come with the heat, they're going to feel it. Because, I mean, you don't just get that many pre-orders and then flop. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I, I mean, I can, I, can, I can say that myself. I told Mason, I was like, hey, bro, I just learned that the horse's balls expand in different biomes. And then I was like, yep, got to pre-order it. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I, you know, my standpoint, honestly, is, is, is it ever going to surpass GTA V in the sense of how many people play that game and the community around it? Whether it was a good or bad community, honestly, I don't think so. But it's just because how you said GTA 5 has the new cars. I mean, it has helicopters, dude. I'm sure this game is going to have still things like heists and other stuff for you to do with your friends and stuff. But unless the map is smaller than it was in GTA 5, I mean, we don't know how fast these horses are going to be. You know what I mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we do. If you play Red Dead on uh, Red Dead 1, you know how fast the horses can get. Then, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Unless they have a certain breed of horse that goes faster and that's going to be the way of doing it. I mean, as if they stay h- historically accurate, we don't know. Maybe they have a fast Oh, they don't travel. have to do that. There's Zebra Donkey, man. The Zebra <laughs> Donkey. I think it was the fastest thing in, in a video game I've ever seen. The zebra donkey was awesome. So the bisons what, were awesome. Now I'm gonna tell you one thing. I can't wait to do my first Red Dead Redemption heist and be running away from the sheriffs and stuff, and then shoot Mason's horse and wait for him to get captured. <laughs> That's what I can't wait for. I hope there's an actual representation of oh, your friend got taken to. Um, the hospital, or not the hospital, where your friend got taken to the sheriff's, the jail, and you gotta break him out. Like, that's gonna be cool. But mm-hmm. I intentionally am gonna shoot his horse just so he falls off and gets captured. 
Well, I, this is where I'll leave my point. I don't think it's going to be as popular as CTA Online just because that game, especially, you know, in its height, was extremely popular. But this game is still going to be very, very successful. And on top of that, we get to see, as you said, what Rockstar can do on the next gen. And I think that that's what this game is all about. Not only is it about giving the people the nostalgia that they've been asking for, giving them the game that they've been asking for, because Red Dead Redemption, we obviously know it. I think I have, like, the Metacritic score on that game was a uh, 9.5 or a 9.8 out of 10. And, and that, that speaks volume. This game is, is an instant classic to a lot of people. And I feel like they had to bring that back. They had to give the sequel to the game for, for those people. But I think what is what is going to be about is just showing people, hey, get excited for GTA Online because this game, as as you've already mentioned, the great detail. Look what we can do in this game. Look what we can do now when we put all our focus in this. Look how awesome we're going to make this game with the heists and all the details and the multiplayer experience. Be prepared for GTA uh, GTA Six, and that, that's what I feel like this is. I feel like this game is giving the people what they've always wanted, which is the sequel and also a like this is our test to you the next the next gta game you, i mean we're gonna blow it out of the water and i think that as you said it's definitely gonna bring up uh the pre-orders and the sales of gta 6 without a doubt especially if they make it i mean at that point i feel like i just hope that gta 6 does not get stuck like what happened this time with the next gen consoles i hope when ps5 and the next xbox come around i hope that that's not the time that gta 6 launches because Although the power of this this generation consoles are still good, I mean, imagine we're gonna be in the age where 4K is gonna be the only that's gonna be the base model right there, and then they're gonna build on top of that. So I really hope that that this game doesn't get stuck in between and it doesn't affect it as much as it did between the the transition from the PS3 and Xbox 360 to the Xbox One and PS4. I really hope that you know they have their their stuff already planned out and that they don't release it in that time so we can see what it is that they can bring to the table and that gets stuck in the middle again as you say so eventually four years six, five years down from release we look back at it and we think we say dang this game still is incredible and i don't get me wrong gta online is still incredible you could get on and still have just as much fun as you did before but I mean, I just, just to kind of just, it has to be better than GTA five. And that is asking for almost an impossible thing. Ugh, let me, oh, hang on. I, I got a little like proposal here for like a cool aspect that they could try and add to one of these games, whether it's GTA six or, or something that they can incorporate in, in Red Dead. But what, like, I feel like it would be so cool if they added like a way that time can move forward in the game. Like, from the time you create your character, time is moving. Just like how we're talking right now and we're getting older. Imagine if your character could get older and, like, things would happen and the map would change or something like that along with how well, your I think character... the map should change, but if you notice your GTA character, the longer you played with him, the older he did get. Well, but that's little things. I'm talking about, like, full-on map change, like, people change, buildings getting torn down and new ones going up just because of the time and like all that kind of stuff like i feel like that would be so cool if they could incorporate that in the game almost like the sims in a sense but like in like well, you never know game. if if it was yeah. gonna happen rockstar would be the game company to do it and i feel like that would like absolutely like that would be like Fortnite almost like i feel like that would be like it would blow people's minds and we definitely get them to buy it all right so final verdict does red Dead redemption 2 live up to what GTA 5 has established? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, there's room to be left to, to, to speculate. That's what mm-hmm. I have to say. Alright, Mason? I, I've i never played it. What I've heard of it, it sounds really good. Is it GTA 5 status? Uh, I don't know yet. I gotta play it. I'll give y'all an a answer to, You know when I play it. But I'm looking forward to it. I'll give you that. And, I mean, basically I have the same, almost the same standpoint. I don't think it's going to be like GTA 5 because again GTA 5 had this this draw to it no matter what you wanted to play that game because everybody was playing it and I feel like Red Dead Redemption is more about the nostalgia more about the people who have been waiting for the sequel almost 10 years later uh to me 
it's it's going to be very successful as i said obviously it already is it had the greatest amount of um pre-orders that of any other game so they've already done fantastic when it comes to sales but still i think that it has a lot to prove and i'm not saying it's not going to be a good game it is i just don't know where it's going to end up versus tta5 i'll tell you one thing i spent a hundred bucks for a million dollars in gta online and i hope it goes far <laughs> all right well uh, that's basically everything we had any final thoughts you guys want to give uh no i hope i hope that everybody enjoyed this and uh i'm trying to figure out how the hell we've been talking for 57 minutes Uh, yeah Yeah, that's the whole point of of these podcasts yeah so if you guys enjoyed the podcast please leave a like obviously subscribe to java or i guess bear witness um you know subscribe to that content did i just get exposed (laughs) shut up anybody who's been (laughs) around you as long as me knows that that was your original name his name is java no, 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 no. Yeah, I need to calm down. Don't be like, <laughs> no. Anyway. Don't you edit uh, this out. Oh, bro. Throw back, <laughs> to that, throw back to that bad video quality in Black Ops 2. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, hey, hey. Ch- ch- like, no, no, find I, that I'm, one I'm day. not talking about the Black Ops 2 theater. I'm talking about, like, the cheap, like, capture cards when we thought we were the, like, we were everything trying to make it with Devil's Wait Handgun. A bro, I'm Wait using my snowball. My I was snowball right now from that time. Good. Yeah, I never, I, this, I'm trying to get this man to give me a blue snow. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys liked it, leave a like. You already know what that is. I will see you guys next time. Hope you guys all have a great night, day, whenever you guys are watching this. And with that being said, peace. Goodbye. Goodbye.